What's happening guys? My name is Nicholas Renault and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at pose estimation using MediaPipe and Python. We'll go through everything you need to do to be able to get up and running. And at the end, we might just put this into practice and build our very own bicep curl tracker. Let's take a deeper look as to what we'll be going through. So first up, what we're going to be doing is setting up MediaPipe. So MediaPipe is our core dependency to be able to go and run pose estimation. That brings us to step number two actually estimating poses. So in this step, we'll actually be able to estimate all the different joints and parts within our body. Then from that point on, we'll actually go and extract our joint coordinates. So we'll actually be able to grab the coordinate for our elbow, for our eyes, for our shoulders, our hands, so on and so forth. Now, once we've got our joint coordinates, we'll take a step into step four, and this is going to allow us to calculate the angles between our joints. So say, for example, we wanted to calculate the angle between our wrist, our elbow, and our shoulder. What we'll actually be able to do is use a little bit of trigonometry to actually be able to calculate the angle for that particular joint. Now, in order to leverage that, we'll actually go on ahead and build a bicep curl tracker. So what we'll do is we'll use the angle calculated from our arm to be able to determine once we've done a full rep. And we'll be able to maintain that history to be able to track how many curls we've actually done. Let's take a look as to how this is all going to fit together. So first up, as I was saying, we're going to be installing MediaPipe with Python, and this is pretty straightforward. So it's just a pip install. So we'll do that for MediaPipe as well as OpenCV. Then what we're going to do is hook into our webcam and actually start making some detections on our machine. So this is going to allow us to draw basic poses, and then we're gonna take it a step further. So from there, we're actually going to go on ahead and actually start tracking our bicep curls. So we'll calculate our joint angles and we'll also implement some logic to calculate once we've done a curl, as well as maintaining that state so we can have a running count. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty guys, so in order to get started with our pose estimation, there's going to be five key things that we need to do. And as per usual, we're gonna take this step by step and build up to our final end product. So first up, we'll install and import our dependencies. So there's two key dependencies that we need there. So media pipe and open CV. Then we're going to start off by making some lightweight detection. So we're just going to detect our poses and not do anything with them as of yet. We'll then start determining our different joints. So we'll be able to extract where our elbow is, where our wrist is, and where all the different joints are within our body. Then we're gonna use that data to be able to go on ahead and calculate angles. So we'll be able to calculate the angle between any three points using trigonometry. Then last but not least, with those angles, we're going to be able to actually build up a curl counter. So if you wanted to use this for a gym tracker device or something along those lines, you'd be able to do that there. So first up, let's kick this thing off by installing and importing our dependencies. So as I said, those two key dependencies, OpenCV and MediaPipe. So let's go on ahead and do it. Alrighty, so those are our dependencies now imported. So in order to do that, we've written exclamation mark pip install media pipe. And this is going to give us all of our media pipe good stuff. So media pipe's a really broad sort of pose estimation or machine pre-built machine learning capability library. So it's got pose estimation, it's got the holistic model, which we did a video on previously, object detection, box tracking, motion tracking, so on and so forth. So there's a bunch of stuff that you can do with this. Then our next dependency is OpenCV. So to install that, we've written OpenCV-Python. So the full line is exclamation mark pip install media pipe space and then OpenCV-Python. So those are our two dependencies now installed. Now the next thing that we need to do is actually import those dependencies. So we're gonna bring in media pipe and we're gonna bring in OpenCV and we're going to set up instances of those as well. Okay, so those are our key dependencies now imported. Now, what we've gone and done is we've written one, two, three, five lines of code there. So if we take a look, what we've gone and done is we've written import CV2. So this is going to import OpenCV into our notebook. Then we've brought in MediaPipe. So to do that, we've written import MediaPipe as MP. So this is going to give us all of our pose estimation libraries and all of our different MediaPipe solutions. So the different components within MediaPipe are normally referred to as solutions, but you'll see that in a sec. Then we've imported NumPy, so this is gonna help us with some trig later on. So import NumPy as NP. And then we've gone and set up MediaPipe. So we've created two new variables. So the first one is MP underscore drawing, 
And this is going to give us all of our drawing utility. So when it comes to actually visualizing our poses, we're going to be using these drawing utils. So the line there is MP underscore drawing equals MP dot solutions dot drawing underscore utils. So this is going to give us all of those drawing utilities. And then the next variable that we've created is MP underscore pose. So this is actually importing our pose estimation model. So remember I was saying there's a whole heap of different models or solutions available inside of media pipe. So face detection, face mesh, iris, which is iris tracking, uh, a hand pose model, a pose model, holistic. So what we're actually doing there is saying that we're grabbing the pose estimation model. Cool, so those are our main dependencies imported. Now, the next thing that we wanna do is actually test out a feed from our webcam. Now, this next block of code is going to be pretty consistent throughout each of our four steps. So we're gonna use this consistent feed to be able to get a real-time video feed from our webcam. So once we've got that feed, then we can start to build up, apply our pose estimation and build our, or calculate our angles as well as build our curl counter. So let's go on ahead, build this feed, and then we'll take a look at what we've written. Okay, so that is our feed now done. I'm just going to add in a comment. So this is going to be a video feed. So before we run that, let's take a look at what we've written. So we've written one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines of code there. Now, if you've ever seen me do any content on real-time estimation or media pipe or specifically the holistic model, this particular block of code is going to be really familiar to you. So first up, what we're doing is we're grabbing or setting up our video capture device. Now, think of your video capture device as anything that you're able to get a video feed from. So it could be a webcam, it could be a USB microscope, it could be um, some other sort of camera that's connected to your particular machine. Now, in this case, the number that I've passed through here is the number from my webcam or the number that actually represents my webcam. So you might need to play around with this number. Ideally, if you get, or so if you do get a bunch of errors when you actually try to run this specifically around like image empty or image must have three dimensions, you wanna try to play around with that video capture device number. So the line that we've written there is cap equals CV2 dot video capture and video is in caps and caps and capture is in caps. And then we've passed through the number zero. Then what we've actually gone and done is we've written another line of code. So this is kicking off our loop. So we've got a while loop here. So while our cap is opened, we're then going to do something. So this is basically going to loop through our particular feed. We're then reading our capture. So this is effectively like saying, hey, give me the current feed from my webcam. So to do that, we've written cap.read, and then we've stored and extracted the variables from that particular line. So ret is really just our return variable. There's nothing in there that we're actually gonna use. Frame is actually gonna give us the image from our webcam. So then what we wanna do is actually visualize this. And this is where cv2.imshow comes in. So cv2.imshow actually gives us a pop-up on our screen that allows us to visualize a particular image. So in here, or so to that particular function, we pass through two variables, what we want our box to be called or what we want our frame to be called. In this case, we've kept it pretty simple. So media pipe feed, and then we've passed through our frame, which is effectively our image from our webcam. So all in all, these four lines of code are accessing our webcam, starting to loop, reading our webcam feed, and then visualizing what our webcam is actually seeing to our computer. Everything down below here is really all to do with what do we do once we break out of our feed or what do we do once we clear our feed. So this particular line here is checking whether or not we hit Q or whether or not we try to close our screen. If we do hit one of those keys or if we try to break out of it, it kills off our loop using the break statement. So basically this is gonna break out of this while loop up here. Now the line that we've written there is if cv2.wait key and then we're passing through the number 10 and 0xff, which is checking for what key we've actually hit on our keyboard, equals Q, so ORD, and then we'll pass through the letter Q, and then we've got a colon, and then we're breaking. So this is all to do with breaking out of our feed. Then if we've broken out of our feed, we're going to release our video capture device. So cap.release is going to release our webcam, and then we're also going to destroy all of our windows. Sorry, I'm scrolling around there. 
So to do that, we've written cv2.destroy all windows. So this is going to close down our video feed. So effectively, we should then be able to uh, kick something off again and not have to deal with any existing windows. Cool, so that is our feed video feed now set up. So let's try running that and see what happens. So ideally you should get a little Python pop up to the bottom here and this is going to be our feed. All right, so that's looking good. So we've got our feed, so you can see that that's rendering appropriately, so no issues there. Now, right now we don't actually have anything happening there. So we want to eventually build up on this and actually start using that feed. If we wanted to, all we need to do is hit Q and that's gonna close down that feed. And as you saw, it's releasing our webcam. So I can see it's released and it's also closing down our window. So that is our baseline code. So we're gonna actually copy this onwards and start using that to make some detections. So let's go on ahead and do that. So we're gonna copy this and we are going to build up on this. So what we're now going to do is actually start applying our media pipe components. So let's go on ahead and do that and then we'll take a look at our new lines of code. Okay, so that's our first line of code done. So I wanna take this one step by step. So what we're doing here is we're setting up a new instance of our media pipe feed. So to do that, we've written with mp underscore pose dot pose. So this is actually accessing our pose estimation model. And then we've passed through two keyword arguments. So min underscore detection underscore confidence equals 50%. So this is saying what we want our detection confidence to be. And then we're also specifying our tracking confidence. So this is maintaining our state. So min underscore tracking underscore confidence equals 0 0.5. So the core thing to know for those two particular metrics are if you want a more accurate model or if you want to be tighter with your detection. So if your particular webcam doesn't sense something and you want it to be really specific, you can bump these metrics up. So if you want really high confidence, you can increase that. If you're not as concerned as having super accurate detections, you can drop that down. Now there is a bit of a trade-off because ideally you want to be able to maintain your state and actually see your detections. But if you set this to a really high level of accuracy or confidence, you're not always gonna get detections if your model doesn't detect a perfect body. So in this case, it's a bit of a trade-off. I found the 50% tends to work pretty well. So then what we're going to do is leverage that as the variable pose. So this particular line is then going to be accessible via the variable pose. So the full line is with mp underscore pose dot pose. And then we're passing through our two arguments, so min detection confidence and min tracking confidence. And then we're going to be leveraging it as pose. So we can now work with this particular line as the variable pose. Let's go on ahead and finish this out and then we'll start seeing some detections. Alrighty, before we go any further, let's take a step back and take a look at what our next components are. So I'm gonna break this down into three sections. So first up, what we're doing is we're recoloring our image. So recolor image. And the reason that we do this is because when we pass our image to MediaPipe, we want our image to be in the format of RGB. Now, when we get a feed using OpenCV, by default, our image feed is going to be in the format of BGR. So if you think of that, an image as three different layers or three different arrays, one's going to be blue, one's going to be green, and one is going to be red. Now, what we want to do is just reorder those different color arrays so that we're passing it through to MediaPipe in the right order. So to do that, first up, we've written image equals cv2.cvt color. And then what we're doing is we're grabbing this frame here. So remember, our frame is our feed from our webcam, and then we're recoloring it or we're reordering it. So cv 2 dot color bgr to rgb so this is just reordering those color arrays then what we're doing is we're applying some performance tuning by setting whether or not our image is writable to false we're basically going to save a bunch of memory once we pass this to our pose estimation model so then we've written image dot flags dot writable equals false so these two lines are all about recoloring our image and setting whether or not it's writable equal to false, then this line over here is the most important line. So this is actually going on ahead and making our detection. So make detection. So you can see that we're accessing our pose model, which is what we set up over here. So you can see that we set up pose over there, 
we're using pose down here. Then we're storing our results in an array. So we're using our pose model. So pose.process our image. So by processing it, we're going to get our detections back. And then we're going to store those detections inside of a variable called results. Then we're setting our image writable status back to true. So image.flags.writable equals true. And then we're going and recoloring it back to BGR because what we're going to do in a sec is re-render it back using OpenCV. And again, OpenCV wants its image in BGR format. So we're going to do that. So we're going to say this line is recoloring back, back to BGR. This is recolor image to RGB. So these three lines, or so these three sections are effectively doing our recoloring and setting our writable status to false, making our detections, then setting our writable status back to true, and then eventually recoloring our image back to the BGR format. But as of now, we haven't actually gone and rendered anything. So we could actually run this, and what you're going to see is really nothing uh, different, right? So what we could actually do is print out our results. So let's try running that and see how we go. Okay, so we can see that we've got our feed, no errors there. And you can see in the background that we're getting our results from MediaPipe. Now we're not actually rendering anything as of yet. So we wanna take a step back and actually start rendering some stuff. So we can close this feed again. We don't need it running. We can hit Q, close that down. And then what we're gonna do is actually apply our visualization component. So we've done our recoloring, but what we wanna do is start rendering. So let's go on ahead and add those couple of lines of code to do our rendering. Okay, so I've gone and done two additional things there. So I've gone and added this line of code here and I've gone and changed the image that we're actually gonna render. So the first line is actually going on ahead and drawing our detections to our image. So to do that, we've written mp underscore drawing dot draw landmark. So this is using our drawing utilities that we imported up here or we set up up here to actually go on ahead and draw to our particular image. So the nice thing about MediaPipe is that it's got this awesome visualization library that allows you to easily draw these results. So you don't need to draw point by point to actually get this rendered. You can just use those drawing utilities. To that, we've passed through three key things. So we've passed through our image, we've passed through our results landmarks. So you can see by accessing results.pose landmarks, this is actually going to give us all of our different landmarks. Now we can actually take a look at this. So if I type in results, dot pose landmarks. You can see that we've got the coordinates for each and every landmark within our body. So this represents each individual point that's represented as part of the pose estimation model. But I'm actually gonna show you what each of these represents once we get to step two. Right, so then what we're doing is we're also passing through, so in that drawing line, we're also passing through the different pose connections. So if I show you this as well, so here you're actually gonna see which landmarks are connected to which. So in this case here, you can see our nose is connected to our left eye inner. So it's gonna be this detect or this joint here. So from here to here, our nose is also connected to our right eye inner. So from here to here, our left eye inner is connected to our left eye, which is gonna be here to here, <laughs> I'm touching my eye. But you can sort of see how it builds up. So these ones are probably more appropriate. So right shoulder is connected to your right elbow. Your right uh, shoulder is also connected to your right hip. So that's going to be that particular point there. This just gives you your different connections. So that's what we're passing through there. Then once we've actually drawn that image, we actually want to render that to the screen. So rather than having frame here, which we did before, we actually want to change that to display our image that now has our different landmarks drawn. So let's go on ahead. So it looks like we've got an extra line there. So let's actually go on ahead and run this and see how we go. And we'll wait for our feed or for our little pop-up. All right, so it looks like it's closed. Let's try that again. Okay, cool. So you can see that we've now got our pose estimation. So right now it's pretty basic. So we've got our hands. So this is really no different to the model that you might've seen inside of the holistic model. And I can take the green screen down. And you can see that it's tracking all of the different components within our body. Cool? So that seems to be working pretty accurately. So it's moving and it's quite quick as well. 
But again, I would rather this be in a different color. So rather than having these standard colors, which are what comes out of media pipe, I'd rather go and change each one of these detection points. So let's close this. So what we can do is pass through two additional components to this draw landmarks line here to be able to go on ahead and change our colors. So let's add those and then I'll take you through them. Okay, so those are our two new lines of code written. So what we've effectively got here is two drawing specs. Now think of a drawing spec as the specifications for our drawing component. So the specifications for how we actually wanna go about drawing a particular landmark. Now, what we can actually do is within this function, we can pass through a number of different arguments. So if I take a look at mp underscore drawing dot draw landmarks, what we're actually doing is we're passing through a number of different things. So first up, we're passing through or so. So first up, we're passing through our image, which is that over there. Then we're passing through our landmarks list. So remember, this is going to be our results.pose landmark. So all of those different coordinates. Then we're passing through our different connections, which is MP underscore pose, pose connections. And then we're actually passing through two additional arguments. So the landmark drawing spec. So this first line over here, represents the color that we want our different dots. So that particular drawing spec is going to have this color, this thickness, this circle radius. We'll come back to that in a second. And then the next argument that we're passing through is our connection drawing spec, which you can see there. So landmark drawing spec, then connection drawing spec. So our connection is actually gonna represent the different lines within our model. Cool, all right. Now let's actually take a look at our drawing spec. So uh, let's actually bring that up. So if we take a look at MP underscore drawing dot drawing spec, you can see that we can pass through a bunch of different arguments. So we can pass through the color, the thickness, as well as the circle radius. So in this case here, you can see um, we've got color for drawing the annotation. So by default, it's gonna go to our green color, the thickness for drawing the annotation, as well as the circle radius if we're drawing a circle. So what we've done is we've gone and specified MP underscore drawing dot drawing spec. We've then passed through the color as a keyword argument and we've set that to 245 comma 117 comma 66. And I believe that is going to be in BGR format. Is it BGR format? Let's take a look, uh, RGB. I can double check that for you. Hit me up in the comments if you want a detailed explanation, but basically you're passing through a color spec there. Then we're specifying the thickness of the line and the annotation as well as the circle radius. So thickness equals two and circle underscore radius equals two. And then we've got our next line. So remember our first line is going to be for our joint and our second line is going to be for our connection, which think of it as your bone. And again, same line. So MP underscore drawing dot drawing spec color equals 245 comma 66 comma 230 inside of a set of braces. So this is going to be similar to a tuple, but with three values. And then we'll specify thickness equals two and circle underscore radius equals two. So the thickness and circle radius are the same for both of these. The only difference is the color here. Cool. So I think that is now good. So let's actually run this and take a look at how we're going. So ideally we should see a similar feed. The only difference between this and that first run is we're going to have different colors. And there you go. So you can now see that we again, we've got the exact same pose estimation model just this time we've got different colors, right? So if I stand up, move around, you can see that again, it's detecting my upper body, it's detecting my hands. And if I move, bring my leg up, yep. <laughs> let's move, bring this down. You can sort of see, chair's blocking it. You can sort of see that it's detecting all my joints. It's just now got different colors, right? Got a feeling we're gonna be green, bringing that green screen down a lot in this video. Okay, so that is all well and good. So let's quickly take a look at what we've gone and added there. So in this section, so remember we started off with our basic video feed. What we then went and added is we set up our media pipe instance. So we use the with statement there. We then recolored our image feed from our webcam from BGR to RGB, and we set a writable status to false. We went and made a detection using pose.process and we passed through our recolored image set our writable status back to true so we can draw on it. And then we went and converted it back from RGB to BGR so that it works with OpenCV. 
We then went and applied our detection to that particular image. So remember we used our image, our landmarks and our pose connections. And then we passed through our two different colors, so our connection color and our, or so our joint color and our connection color. And then we actually went and changed what we're actually rendering. So in this base feed, we're just rendering a frame. In our updated feed, which is making our detections, we're actually detecting our image. Cool. So now the next thing that we're actually going to do is actually go on ahead and determine our joints. Now I've actually got a joint map here, which is going to help render this or explain this a little bit better. So if you actually take a look, this is the architecture for our pose detection model. So there are 32 landmarks in total, and these are each of the landmarks. So we've got our nose, we've got our left eye inner, our left eye, our left eye outer, so on and so forth. So you can see that each one of these numbers maps to a specific coordinate within our body. So point 12 is actually our right shoulder, point 24 is our right hip, point 23 is our left hip, so on and so forth. But you can see that this is all the detail that's available when you're working with the media pipe pose model. Now, rather than just sort of showing you this diagram, let's actually go on ahead and extract some of these joints. So again, what we're gonna do is copy our code from step one. So we're gonna build up on this code step by step. So I'm gonna copy that and bring it into this cell here. And now we're gonna add in a couple of additional lines to be able to extract each one of these landmarks. So let's go on ahead and do that. Cool, that's really it to extract our landmark. So we've gone and written four lines of code there. So this little block is effectively going to allow us to extract our landmarks. Now, if we actually take a look at what we've written, so we've written a try accept block. So sometimes you're not actually gonna be able to extract the landmarks. Sometimes they're not visible. Your webcam feed has a break. So we ideally don't wanna destroy our entire feed. Rather, it's easier to just have a try accept block. So if we don't make any detections, then we can just pass. So we've written try colon, and then we've gone and set up a new variable called landmarks to hold our different landmarks. And we're going to set that variable equal to results dot pose landmarks dot landmarks. So this is actually going to give us our actual landmarks. Then if we don't have any detections or if we have an error, we're just going to pass through. So we're not going to break the loop. We're not going to destroy it. We're just going to step out of it. So this ideally is going to allow us to extract our landmark. So I'm going to run this and we'll actually see our landmarks get created. Let's actually print them out, print landmarks. So we can actually see those results. So let's go on ahead and run that and we should be able to see our landmarks generated. Let's just make sure this is gonna run. That looks like it didn't uh, run. So let's try running that again. So sometimes it'll pop up and then just close. Just try running it again and you should be good to go. All right, so we're good there. And if we take a look, you can see that we're getting all of our landmarks down here. So each one of these represents a different coordinate or a different joint within our pose estimation model. Now, again, these are going to re-render re as we're actually going through. So what we wanna do is actually take a look at one of these landmarks or start extracting some joints. So let's quit out of our feed and let's actually grab a landmark from our last loop. So if I actually go and type in landmarks, you can see that we're going to be able to extract each one of these different components. So we've got X, Y, Z and its visibility. And if you keep going, ideally the length should be the same length as our model up here. So we've got 32 points. And again, it starts at zero. So you're going to bump one up and we've got 32 or 33 landmarks. So again, so this, uh, these landmarks are just going to represent what we've actually got here. Now, what we can actually do is we can actually grab a mapping to each one of these landmarks. So if we wanted to, we can actually access mp underscore pose dot pose landmark. And we can loop through it. So for connection in mp pose. Actually, this is just a landmark. It's not a connection. So land, let's just call it LND mark. So you can see that this actually gives us our mapping for each one of our landmarks. So in this case, pose landmark nose is gonna be the first one, which maps to nose. If we go to the second one, it's gonna be left eye inner, left eye inner. So you can see that you've now actually got a bit of a map to work out what each one of these different landmarks are. Now, what we can do is we can actually use this to be able to go on ahead and grab our landmark out of here. So let's go on ahead and do that.
Oh, so this line of codes were written for landmarks, so L-N-D-M-R-K in MP underscore pose dot pose landmark. So this is actually an iterator. Then we've included a colon, then print, and then inside of braces, L-N-D-M-R-K. So basically we're printing each landmark from that particular landmark map. Then what we can do is, as I was saying, we can actually go on ahead and grab one of these landmarks out using this map. So let's try that. Okay, so that actually shows you how to use that landmark map. So what we've gone and done is we've gone and grabbed our landmarks, which is what we set up as part of this loop. So we're just grabbing the last set of landmarks from that loop, and then we're accessing it from our particular array. So if I actually extract this, this is just going to give us an index. So mp underscore pose dot pose landmark dot left shoulder dot value. So if I take off value, you can see that it's just going to give us our specific landmark as well as its index. So by typing in dot value, we're going to get where in our big landmarks array our left shoulder value actually is. So in this case, it's going to be 0.11. So say for example, we wanted our nose. So type in nose. You can see that our nose value is going to be 0 0.0. So if we actually paste that in, we've now got the landmark for nose. So you can try any of these, right? So let's try a different one. So right wrist, for example. So right wrist is going to be 0.16. So let's try that. And you can also just pass through 16 into here as well, but I find it more useful to actually use the map. So right wrist is going to be that landmark there. So again, and if we take a look, this particular value should be what, 15, 16. So it's going to be, so right wrist is 16. So you can see that you've got your mapping there. So this gives you the ability to leverage each one of these landmarks now. So say for example, we wanted to calculate the angle. What we might wanna do is calculate the angle between our left shoulder, our left elbow, and our left wrist. So ideally, when you do a bicep curl, for example, you'd be looking for the angle that that particular joint is at, right? So let's go on ahead and extract those three. So 11, 13, and 15. So we don't actually need those numbers. For example, we can just go left shoulder. So that's our left shoulder there. Then we can copy that. We can say left elbow. And then we can do that again and grab left wrist. So I get a lot of questions about how to actually extract these landmarks and work out which values which. This is exactly how you do it. So you grab your landmarks and then you use your mapping to work out which particular coordinate uh, you ne actually need. And again, the same process would apply if you're doing the facial landmark recognition or the face mesh uh, style recognition as well. Again, so you're sort of grabbing your landmarks then you're working out which value within that particular landmark set actually represents your value. Now we're coming to the good bit. So that is step one, making our detections and step two, determining our joints done. So we've gone through quite a fair bit already. Now, the next thing that we actually wanna do is actually calculate the angle. So for this, we're gonna be using a little bit of trigonometry. So this code is actually based on the official iOS code to be able to calculate angles using media pipe. I tried to find the link. I couldn't find it. I'll link it in the descriptions below. If I do, I've just gone and rewritten it for Python. So what we're going to do is create this function to calculate our angle first up. And then we're going to try to calculate that angle between this particular joint here. So we're going to calculate our angle for our effectively our left shoulder, elbow, and our wrist. So we should ideally be able to work out what this angle over here is. So let's go on ahead and write up this function. So we're just gonna create a couple of new cells and let's do it. Actually, before we go any further into this, let's actually take a step back and see what we're going to be writing here. So I was going to write the whole thing, but let's take it step by step. So we're creating a new function called calculate angle. So def calculate underscore angle. And to that, we're going to be passing through three points, A, B, and C. Now, A, B, and C are going to represent our first, our mid, and our end point. So in this case, it's going to be our first, so point 11, our mid, our number 13, and our end point, number 15. So what we're effectively going to be able to do is calculate the angle between any three points. So for that, we've set up three arguments, so A, B, and C, and then we've specified or we've passed through a colon, and then we're converting them all to NumPy arrays. This is just gonna make it easier to actually go on ahead and calculate these angles. 
So we've gone and specified variable A, so we're basically overriding A, B, and C, and we've converted those to NumPy arrays. Then what we're going to do is calculate the radians and actually convert that to an angle. So let's go on ahead, finish this off, and then we'll take a step back and take a look. Alrighty, that is our calculate angle function done. So let's take a look at what we've actually written here. So the next two lines of code, so we already sort of went through this top line here. The next two lines of code are gonna calculate our radians for our particular joint and then the angle. And what we're gonna do is convert that into an angle which is between zero and 180 because our arm isn't gonna go 360 degrees, right? So we'll, maximum angle we want is 180 degrees. So what we've done here is we've written radians equals np.arctan2 and then what we're effectively doing is we're subtracting our y values so y from our endpoint minus y from our midpoint so c1 minus b1 and this is effectively going to be extracting this value here so this particular y value minus the y value from here so say for example we're actually taking a look at our wrist so if we say our shoulder is or our wrist is our last point so we'd be grabbing y1 which is effectively going to be this or c1 minus b1 which is going to be this then we're going to do the same with our x variables so c0 minus b0 so it's going to be c0 which is this x value here minus this value then we're going to go on ahead and do the same but this time we're going to do it with our first and our midpoint so these two values here so it's effectively going to be a1 which is going to map through to our first point which is going to be our shoulder so a1 which is going to be y minus b1 which is going to be our y from our midpoint so our elbow and then a0 minus b0 so x so x from our first point minus x from our midpoint then what we're doing is we're converting that into an angle so we're multiplying our radians by 180 degrees and dividing it by pi so the value pi and then we're converting that to an absolute value so this should ideally give us our angle but a 360 degree angle then what we're doing is we're mapping that through. So rather than having 360 degrees, we're just going to have a max of 180. Then we're going to go on ahead and return our angle. So what we actually want to do now is actually test this out. So ideally what we want to be able to do is grab our shoulder or our left shoulder, our left wrist or our left elbow and our left wrist value. So let's go on ahead and grab these. So I'm going to set up three new variables. So our shoulder, our elbow, and our wrist to be able to calculate this. So let's go on ahead and do that. And we're actually going to pass through only two values. So we're going to pass through our X variable and our Y variable or our X coordinate and our Y coordinate. So let's go on ahead and grab those values and then we can test it out. Okay, so let's take a look at that before we actually go and do the same for our elbow and our wrist. So I've gone and created a new variable called shoulder, which you can see there. And then what I'm effectively doing here is I'm just going in ahead and grabbing the landmark that we had up here. So you can see we've written the exact same line of code. So landmarks, and then we've passed through the coordinate number. So mp underscore pose dot pose landmark dot left shoulder dot value exactly the same as what we had up here mp underscore pose dot pose landmark dot left shoulder dot value then to the end of that array we're specifying that we only want to grab the x value to begin with so effectively this line over here is the exact same as this line over here the only difference is that we're typing dot x to the end to only grab the x value so this is grabbing our x value and then we've replicated the exact same thing over here to grab just the y value so effectively we're going to be writing this exact same line over here but this time we're just grabbing the y value so you can grab a number of values from this so you can grab the z value and i believe you can also grab visibility so as to whether or not it is uh, visibility as to whether or not that particular joint is visible to the camera at a point in time so that is for our shoulder. So we've gone and grabbed our X coordinate and we've gone and grabbed our Y coordinate. So what we're effectively going to be doing is passing our shoulder in as value A, which is going to be our first value, our elbow as value B, which is going to be our midpoint and our shoulder and our wrist as value C, which is going to be our end point. So these three joints are going to map to A, B and C to be able to calculate our 
angle. So let's go ahead and copy this and we can just make two additional variables. So we're going to have our shoulder, our elbow, and our wrist. And if we then go and update these, so rather than having left shoulder here, it should be left elbow. And it should be left elbow over here as well. And then this is going to be left wrist. W-R-I-S-T, yep, that's good, that's good. So now if we take a look at shoulder, that's fine. Elbow, that's fine as well. Wrist, that's good as well. So we've now got our three different joint coordinates. Now what we can actually do is pass this to our calculate angle value. So if we do that, calculate angle, and we go and pass through those three values, so shoulder, elbow, and wrist. We've got our angle calculated. So there you go. So we've gone and passed through our three different joint coordinates and we've gone and been able to actually calculate our angle. Now, what we could actually do is we could actually sub our different values. So say for example, we didn't want to just calculate uh, joint 11, 13, and 15. Say for example, we wanted to calculate this particular coordinate here. So how far away our elbow is from our core body. Well, we could go on ahead and calculate this angle. So remember, so that means our start point is going to be 23. Our midpoint is going to be 0.11 and our end point is going to be 13. So let's actually test that out. So we're going to need uh, left hip, then left shoulder, and then left elbow, which is going to be 13. So let's go on ahead and change this, right? So rather than having shoulder, elbow, wrist, so let's try this again. So we can type in, it should be left hip. Then our midpoint is going to be our left shoulder, so 0.11. And our wrist, so our endpoint, uh, this variable is obviously not named correctly, but you sort of get the idea. Then our last point is going to be a le left elbow. So left elbow. Right, so we can do that. So we've got different coordinates. And if we calculate our angle, it's 14 degrees. So you can see that we're able to really calculate an angle between any three of these points. So this gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of power, right? So you can then go on ahead and do a lot with this particular calc. But what we actually want to do is render this to our visualization, because right now we're not actually doing anything with it, but we actually want to do something with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace these with our shoulder, elbow, and our wrist values. So let's go on ahead and do that. So if we now calculate our values again, yep, 166. And then as per usual, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with our main detection codes. We're going to copy this from step two. So remember we had our detection code at step two. Let me zoom out so you can see that. So this big block of text. So we're going to copy that and we are going to paste it down here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to update this code to be able to actually visualize our angle. So we'll do it initially. So we'll do it for our particular elbow joint. So this is going to give us our bicep, initial bicep curl code. So let's go on ahead and do that. Okay, so we've gone and added a bunch of additional code there, but most of this should be pretty familiar because what we've actually gone and done is copied our calculate angle code and then gone and visualized it. So let's take a look at what we've actually gone and done here. So first up, what we've gone and done is we've gone and grabbed our coordinates from our shoulder, our elbow, and our wrist. So this code over here is no different to what we used over here. So I've just gone and copied this down. So remember, we're grabbing our different coordinates, our x value and our y value. So our x value, oh, sorry, our x coordinate and our y coordinate. And we're storing that inside of an array, which is going to be accessible via the variable called shoulder. And then we've gone and done the same for our elbow and for our wrist. Then what we've gone and done is we've used our calculate angle function, which we defined up here. And we're passing through our shoulder, our elbow and our wrist. Then the next line of code, so this little bit is new. So we've gone and actually rendered our angle to the actual screen. 
Now, what we're actually doing is we're using the put text method from CV2. So CV2.putText, and then to that, we're passing through a number of different arguments. So we're passing through our image, which is going to be the image that we're actually working with from our webcam. We're then passing through our angle and we're converting that to a string. So str, and then we've passed through our angle. And then we're actually going and determining where our positioning actually is. Now to do that, there's a little bit of math involved, but basically we're using an array multiplication method. So we're grabbing our elbow coordinate. So the angle is actually gonna be rendered right next to our elbow. And then we're multiplying it by the dimensions of our webcam. So my webcam feed is coming through as 640 by 480. So I'm just passing through those two values. 640 by 480. So this is effectively going to grab our elbow coordinates. Let me actually show you. So np.multiply. So if we grab our elbow coordinates and multiply by 640 by 480, what we're actually getting are the specific coordinates for a particular elbow for the size of the feed coming from our webcam. So when we actually get these coordinates, these are actually normalized coordinates. So they're not coordinates based on the size of our particular image. So what we need to do is a little bit of processing to get that available. And so that's exactly what this line of code is doing there. Now, because CV2 requires these values to be passed through as integers, we're just converting it to an integer. So as type int, which gives us that, and then we're converting it to a tuple because that's what CB2 expects. So you effectively get that. So the coordinates that it's actually gonna to render to are 531 and 591. So this actually represents where that particular joint is going to be within our image. And that is that positioning there. So that entire line of code is effectively doing that. Then we're just passing through some additional CV2 uh, requirements for our image. And it looks like we've got an extra one of those there. So then it's just passing through the font that we want to use, how big the font we want, the color of our font. So if you wanted to change it from white, you could do that. If you wanted it to be black, you could just type 000. We're passing through our line width and our line. So CV2.line AA. should be AA. Cool. Now, ideally, if we run this code, we should now be able to get the angle for our particular joint over here. So let's go on ahead and run this and see how we go. So let's just say visualize angle. So we've got good commentary. Let's run that. So it looks like, what have we done there? So we've got, that's fine. We haven't closed our tuple up here. So let's just close that. Cool. So that looks like it's running. Now, if I actually bring my arm up, you can see that we've now got our angle rendering. So if I bring it to about 90 degrees, that's looking pretty close. So if we bring it in closer, that's working. Open it up, that's better. So you can start to see that we've now got our joint angle calculated. And if I actually step away, let's take a look at this. You can see that that's actually rendering in real time. So if I make it almost straight, so it's straight as possible, it's getting to about 170, 180, which is about right. If I bring it in, you can see that it's bringing back up to like five to seven degrees, so 15. So if I open it up again, you can start to see that that's calculating the angle appropriately. Now, right now we're doing it for our wrist, our elbow and our shoulder, but what we could actually do is change this and calculate that angle that I was describing. So from my hip, my shoulder, and my elbow. So let's try that and see how that goes. So what are we gonna do? So we're gonna change the angle that we actually calculate. So let's quit out of this by hitting Q. Now remember how I was saying, in order to do this, all you need to do is change the coordinates that you grab. So remember our first point is going to be our left hip. So let's change that there and there. Our midpoint is going to be our left shoulder. So left hip, left shoulder, and then left elbow. So let's do that. Now, if I run that again, we should get the angle calculated for a different joint. Oh, that's closed. Let's try running that again. So sometimes it'll just close. So, all right, so there you go. So we've got our angle for our shoulder. Now, if I open it up, so you can see that it's now calculating this particular joint. So if I go to 90 degrees, and see that that's calculating. So you can do this for literally any joint. So as long as you've got three coordinates and you make the midpoint, the midpoint or the midpoint, the angle that you actually want to calculate, you can actually use this for a whole bunch of stuff. So you can see that we're getting that angle there calculated in real time. You could also uh, 
round this up if you wanted to, if you didn't want to display all of the different coordinates. But pretty cool, right? So that's our angle calculator. I don't know, I'm a kid in a toy shop. So I love being able to do this stuff. So we've got our angle calculated. Yeah, we can do that. All right, awesome. Enough messing around. Let's go on ahead. What we're actually going to do though is we're going to set this back to our shoulder, our elbow, and our wrist. So we can type in left, shoulder, left shoulder, and left elbow. elbow and uh, left wrist. We're almost there guys, this is going swimmingly. All right, cool, so we've got left shoulder, left, let's just test that out again, make sure that works. Nope, close, try that again. All right, that's good, let's bring up our arm. So there we go, so we've got our angle being calculated. That's all well and good. All right, cool. We're going well. Now we can also get rid of this print landmarks because we don't actually want that rendered. So let's quickly take a look at what we did in this section here. So we went and defined our function to calculate our angle and we used a little bit of trig. We then went and extracted our three different coordinates, our shoulder, our elbow, and our wrist. And then we used our calculate angle function to actually be able to do that. And then we went and applied this new section of code over here to be able to go and render that particular angle to our frame. And again, you, if you wanted to change the, the angle that you actually calculate, you just need to be mindful of the midpoint, but you can change this to different joints if you wanted to. So remember we did left elbow or left shoulder, left elbow, left wrist, but we also did left hip, left shoulder, left elbow. So again, world's your eyes to here. You can calculate a whole bunch of different angles. But on that note, we are now up to step four, building our curl counter. So. Let's go on ahead and do this. Now, as per usual, we're going to copy this block of code and we're going to build up again. So let's paste it in there. Now, what we just need to do is implement a little bit of logic to work out when we are actually curling. So ideally, what we want to do is when we're down at the bottom of our curl, we're going to say that that's uh, the down position. And then once we pass a certain angle threshold, we're going to say that we're now in the up position and that represents one curl. So again, you could apply this to a whole bunch of different gym use cases. Um, you could do this for shoulder presses. You could do, the, do it for a whole bunch of different um, exercises as well. Now, the core thing to note with this particular method is that it's limited to a single joint. So you could obviously extend it out and do joint by joint, but they've, I've actually got a better method to do multi-pose tracking or multi-gym tracking for that particular case. But again, that's gonna be in another video. So do stay tuned if you'd like to see that. So we're gonna be able to use that particular code for body language analysis, sentiment analysis, and a whole bunch of other goods up. But for now, we're gonna to stick to our curl counter. So let's go on ahead and apply this logic and have our curl counter built. So first up, what we're going to do is create two new variables. So we're going to create a counter. So in this case, we're going to set it to zero. And we're also going to create a stage and set it to none. Now, our counter, as you might have guessed, is going to represent our running count for our different bicep curls. And our stage is going to represent whether or not we're at the down part of our curl or the top part of our curl. So down or up. Now, what we just need to do is implement a little bit of logic to actually go and set these variables. So let's go ahead and finish this off. Okay, so that is our new curl counter logic. So what we'll do is we'll test this out, but before we do that, let's actually take a look at what we've written. So first up, what we're doing is we're setting whether or not we are in the down position of our curl. So basically, if our angle is greater than 160, and I've given us a little bit of leeway because you might not always get all the way down to 180. So 160 is a bit of a fair compromise. So if our angle is greater than 160, then we're going to say we're at the stage down. So if angle greater than 160, colon, stage equals down. So we're basically saying if we're at 160 or greater, our arm is in the down position. Then what we're doing is applying some additional logic. So if our angle is less than 30, so around up here, and our stage is currently set to down, 
Then what we're actually going to do is reset our state and say we're actually in the up position and increase our counter to one. So this is effectively going to say that once we pass our 30 degree threshold and if we're coming from a down position, we are then going to bump up our counter. And the reason that we're checking whether or not we're coming from a down position is that we don't want our counter to keep spinning up once we pass that 30 degree angle. So we're actually checking that we've come from a down position into an up position, not that we've just passed into an up position. So we should be able to run this now and see our bicep curl counter pop up. So let's just make sure that we don't have any additional prints in here. Uh, so look, we're looking good. So just to confirm, so what we've gone and done is created our new counter variables and then we've applied our counter logic. So I think we're good. Let's test this out. Looks like it's closed. Let's run it again. So if it pops up and closes, just try running the cell again. You should be good to go. Cool, that's good now. So let's try doing a curl. So there you go. So you can see our curl has just popped up with one. So you can see that that's actually running. So if we go and do another one, two, three, four, five, six, Pretty cool, right? So that's our basic curl counter done. Now, I don't wanna stop there. We wanna actually visualize this to the screen. So let's make this look good. So right now we've got our curl counter logic, but we actually need to render this to our particular frame. So this is actually reasonably straightforward to do. We just need to leverage, again, CV2 to actually be able to show it to the screen. So let's go on and do that. And then we should be done with our curl counter. Okay, so first up, what we're going to do is set up a bit of a status box. So cv2.rectangle, and then we've gone and passed through a number of arguments. So specifically, this a comma here. So specifically, the image that we want to apply to. So this is going to give us a status box in the top uh, left-hand corner. So ideally, it should be a place that we can render all of our stuff. So we're specifying what image we want to draw it onto, the start point for our rectangle, the end point for our rectangle, its color, and by setting the last point or the line width equal to negative one, it's gonna fill the box with color as well. So it should be a colored box. So if we actually run this, let's take a look. Again, we're not actually gonna have anything in that box as of yet, but in a second, let's try that again. But in a second, we should see our box in the top corner. So you can see that we've now got our blue box. So we're now gonna render everything into that box. Okay, we can close out of that. So let's go on ahead and actually put some stuff in that box. Okay, so that is our rep data now visualized. So we've gone and written, uh, it looks like four lines of code, but really it's two lines of code there. So effectively, we're just going in ahead and using our put text method from CV2 again. So CV2.putText, we're passing through our image, passing through the text that we want to display and its start coordinate. So in this case, we're going to have a little uh, label called reps that allows us to see where the reps value is. And we're starting that at coordinate 15 comma 12. So in this case, that coordinate there, passing through the font that we wanna use, cv2.font Hershey simplex, the size of the text, the color, the line width and the line type. And then again, we're doing the same thing down here, but in this case, rather than just displaying the title, we're gonna be able to display our counter. And again, we've got a slightly different start coordinate. So it's gonna be 10 comma 60. And then again, we're just passing through some additional details the font, so font Hershey simplex, the size of our font, so in this case, it's going to be two, the color, in this case, it's going to be white, so 255, 255, 255, the line width, we've set that to two, and the line type. So now, if we run this, we should get our status box with a little title that says reps, and a counter in the bottom of it that actually represents the counter for our curls. So let's go on ahead and try this and see how we go. Cool, so we've now got our rep counter up here, so you can see it, oh. So if we now go and make a curl, make a curl, make a curl. 
Cool. So you can see that that's now calculating, right? Looks like it was detecting my arm a little bit crazily before. So you can see pretty accurate, right? And it's incrementing our counter. So that's pretty good, right? So you're now at least able to calculate your different reps. Now, the next thing that we want to do, or the next thing that I want to visualize is actually the position of our arm. So whether or not we're up or down. So let's go on ahead, copy this over. And we just need to make a few different changes to this particular, or this, these two sets of code to be able to display our stage. So let's go on ahead and do that. Okay, that should be our stage data kind of done. So what we've gone and done is we've effectively just copied this particular line or these two lines of text. We've just changed the start coordinate. So we're just starting the stage title at 65, 12, and we're starting our actual stage value, so up or down at 60, 60. But everything else between here and here is really the same. So now we should have reps and our stage. So let's go on ahead and test this out now. So I wanna bring my arm down to the down position. Let's run it. Nope, oh, box is closed, try that again. Cool, so we've now got our reps and we've got our stage and you can see our angles calculated just down there. Now, if we bring it up, one. And you can see it's accurately ca calculating our reps as well as our stage. So we can again, keep going, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pretty cool, right? So you've got the ability to now go on ahead and visualize each of your reps. Now, if I take a step away, right? So if I move back, so let's go on ahead and try this out again. Oh, our cell's closed, run it again. So again, you can see my arm, you can see the angle calculated at this joint. So it's 176, 75. Now, as soon as we pass through, you can see that's now gone up by one. Pass through, gone up. So we've now effectively got our rep counter. And all we're doing is we're using media pipe, calculating our angle. And but you can see there's a whole bunch of use cases for this, right? So we can keep going up. Pretty cool, right? So that gives you the ability. Oh, it looks like we've got a little bit of overlap. So you can reset that and shift around the position. But you sort of get the idea. So you've now got the ability to go on ahead and leverage MediaPi for a whole bunch of different use cases. So let's quickly take a look at what we've gone and done there. So we've gone and I've finished off with a rep counter. So the core changes that we did there are we set up our curl counter variables. So we set up that and then we went and set up our curl counter logic. Now, again, you saw that once we got up to curl number 10, there was a little bit of text overlap. So you can just reposition these uh, values. So if you wanted to move those around, you could definitely do that really easily just by changing our coordinates or our start coordinates over here, 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 and here. So you can move those around. You could also make the font a little bit smaller. But you sort of get the idea, right? So we've now gone and done a bunch of stuff in this tutorial. So we went and imported and installed our dependencies. We went and made our initial detections determined our joints. So we were able to extract each one of our joints based on this map over here. We then went and had those landmarks, calculated our angle. So we went and set up our calculate angle method, which is really portable. You could use this wherever you'd like. And then we went and calculated and rendered our angles in this particular block of code. And then we finished off with our curl counter. So if we run our curl counter again, we should be able to calculate some curls. Again, so we're now at baseline stage. And if we curl, you can see that we're now calculating our curls. So that's sort of that. So that about wraps it up for this tutorial. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, we went through quite a fair bit. Again, if you want access to this code, it's gonna be available via GitHub in the description below. All free, you can grab that whenever you like and use it. And if you get stuck or have any questions, by all means, do hit me up in the comments and don't forget to join the Discord server. On that note, that about wraps it up. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and tick that bell so you get notified of when I release future videos. And a huge thank you to all of you out there. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, it means the world to me. We just passed 10,000 subscribers and I couldn't be more ecstatic to bring you more AI videos and good stuff. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.